Aleluia. Aleluia. Let us welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst. Continue to praise His name. Praise our Heavenly Father. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the El Shaddai. We exalt His name, we magnify His name. Give him the praise that he deserves. Just worship his name. Welcome him in our midst.
was so good Master You are so great What no man can do You have done for me What no man can do You have done for me said that's what you've done you've made our life to blossom you've kept us um, from after the first quarter we are already in the beginning of the second quarter you're still keeping us thank you for january thank you for february thank you for march we are already in april you are still doing wondrous things you are still doing wondrous things you are still doing wondrous things begin to thank god begin to thank god begin to thank god when you look at your family everyone is complete everyone is complete your children are there your husband is there everybody is there we say thank you we say thank you we say thank you for expansion thank you for all the programs we've done in church we go, lord we say thank you thank you for all the sundays we've come to church even the ones we've missed even the worst days all the services we thank you for the workers we thank you for everybody in church we thank you for each and every family represented we say thank you we say thank you we say thank you for the wedding bells we say thank you for the testimonies god you are the one that do all these things what no man can do it's what you do you've been known to do things that are things that are mind-blowing the bible says that um he said the things that we cannot think of that's what god does the things that we cannot imagine the things that have not been in the heart of man that are, those are the things god does begin to say thank you god will say thank you thank you everlasting father be that exalted oh lord for in jesus mighty name we pray for in jesus mighty name we pray now let's pray for the service that god will open our hearts that our hearts will become receptive re receptive like a good soil that each and every word that comes today you will receive it well in the name of jesus let's begin to pray and say father open my heart lord to the word in the name of jesus this word should transform me this word should grow me in the name of jesus i should grow from hearing this word like i should not be the same i should become a new creature after this word in the name of jesus this word should like after hearing this word my life will not remain the same again in the name of jesus be that exalted oh lord be that magnified father for in jesus mighty name we pray for in jesus mighty name we pray let the house say amen and heavenly father will say thank you be that exalted oh lord in the name of jesus thank you for in thank you for bringing us into this month we're in the third week already students are rounding off this week we say thank you 
Thank you because no one has come and given bad news. We say thank you for those who has passed on to glory. And we say thank you for those of us who are here already. We say thank you for every children. Thank you for even, even, even the multiplication you are going to do this year. Thank you for each and every department, from the choir department to the technical department, to those that carry cameras, to everybody, the ushering department, children department. We thank you for each and every department. Thank you, Lord, that we look at them and we see that the numbers are still intact. That instead of them reducing, they are even growing. This is, this is only your work. This is only what you do. And we say, be thy exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we want to go into this Wednesday service and the front us on this word, O Lord, interpret this word. Let your Holy Spirit do what it does best by interpreting this word to each and every one that will listen online and, and on site in the name of Jesus. This word will nurture us in the name of Jesus. This word will expand us in the name of Jesus. This word will bear testimonies in the name of Jesus. Let the word of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts, let them be acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Greet somebody beside you and say, you are welcome to church. Yeah, pastor, you are welcome to church. Yeah, you're welcome to church. You're welcome to church. Praise the Lord again. You can have your seats. Sorry, you can have your seats. Uh, amen. Amen. Okay. Good to see you, Simi. <laughs> So, we're talking about um, sons and daughters. It's, uh, last week, we, um, on Sunday, pastor spoke about identity. Yeah, and if you don't know yourself, um, the, the conditions of life and the situations of life will, will tell you who you are. Am I louder, please? Um, be, am I louder? Yeah, the situations of life and everything will tell you who you are. And it is until you step into your identity. It is, you, it is until you step into who you are and who God has created you to be that you will be able to come boldly to even do some things that God has promised us. So today, I want to be talking about. Um, I want to be talking about um, when you pray, when you pray, the the identity you are when you pray, the your the the man of prayer, the person of prayer when you pray. Because Jesus Christ has done a lot for us. He has done a lot. He, um, even in Matthew chapter 6, he taught us how to pray. He, sh he showed us a lot of things. But our Bible text will be taken from the book of Matthew, um, sorry, Mark 11, um, 23 to 24. A very popular scripture. So that's where um, we would be today. Mark 11, 23 to 24. The Bible says, For freely and say unto you, that whatsoever... That shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast out into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has seen come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he seeth. Then 24, which we are going to really base on today. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So, in Matthew chapter 6, um, before we go to this text, um, there's a kind of prayer Jesus taught his disciples on how to pray in Matthew chapter 6. That the first thing, the first time Jesus taught his disciples how to pray um, is Matthew chapter 6. That's the lost prayer. We all know the lost prayer. Our Father, two times 11, not two times 11, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, um, things like that. So, um, the first, he said, let thy will be done. So, before you pray anything, um, we obviously know that the will of God must first be done, even before our desires. So, so, and when we go to our text, you'll see that God said, therefore I say unto you, that is also the will of God. Just imagine Jesus Christ sitting beside you and whispering in your ear saying, therefore I say unto you. So, it is also the same thing. So, it is, the, it is, also, the, it is also the will of God. It is Jesus Christ whispering in your ear. So, but by the time he said it already, um, so when God says this thing, the word of the Lord is powerful and we know that. And something I like about the Bible, I love three things about the Bible. The Bible is personal, the Bible is entertaining, and the Bible is educative. It, it is personal in the sense that when they were writing this book for your transformation, they made sure they were writing it to one person. So when you read the Bible, you read the Bible 
like singularly to yourself. He wasn't addressing multiple people. Even when Jesus Christ was addressing the multitude and, and the 5,000, everybody, he was speaking to them as one person. Jesus made sure he spoke to one person. So in this, our Bible text, it says, therefore I say unto you. So God is speaking to you as a person. God is speaking to your identity. God is speaking to your person. He's not speaking to everybody. So when we read the Bible, um, it is educated because we learn, um, we are transformed. Um, we are transformed, and it is, that's why it is educated. It is entertaining because of the stories. You see storytelling. You see some storytelling skills going on. So, and when you pick the Bible, like it deliberately speaks to your person. It, deliber- it is deliberate. So if there is any issue, it, like there is a Bible verse that will solve that issue personally. There is a Bible verse. There is a, even from Genesis to Revelation, if you pick up any Bible verse, that, um, there is something like it is personal. It is very personal. And that was done for our transformation. It was deliberately done for our transformation, being that personal. Being that personal. So, there are two templates of prayer here. There is the one according to Matthew, because this is Bible study. So, let's study the Bible um, vehemently. So, according to Matthew chapter 6, and there's another template according to Mark eleven twenty four, 24. Matthew chapter 6. Um, so, the Matthew chapter 6 template is a more um, done for you template. You see it. There's a structure. So when you want to, um, 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 Matthew chapter 6, there's a temple, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come, that will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So there's a template. So when you want to pray, you will just exchange, you just exchange some things, especially that part when you want God to provide that, um, that prayer that says, um, give us this day our daily bread. Just exchange it to what you need. So there's, a, there's, there's that template. And there's also this template that you pray from your desires to when you receive. That is Matthew eleven twenty four, 24, which says that um, the first thing you do is um, God has spoken unto you already. Then you desire. Then you pray. Then you believe that you've received it. And also then you shall have them. There's also that template. That one is, um, that is more of um, DIY. Do it yourself. So when you want to pray, you do that one yourself. You look at that Bible verse. Then you... Then you um, then you um, fashion out how you want the will of God, or fashion out how you want your desire to come out after the prayer. So these, the second template is more of, you know that this is the answered prayer. Then you now have to go from prayer to believing that you received it. Then you will have them. Yeah. So the Matthew eleven twenty four is the prayer you pray when you already know your identity. Because if you don't believe, if you don't believe in God and you don't believe in yourself, um, this prayer will not work. Because this prayer has to do a lot more, we believe. This prayer has to do a lot more with our faith. So this prayer, this, the Matthew eleven twenty four, Jesus came from a perspective of faith. He came from his perspective of faith. Because when we read um, Matthew 11, verse 23, you said that um, if you have faith and you speak to this mountain, then this mountain shall be moved. But in Matthew chapter 6, he just gave us a template that, okay, this is what you need. So that one is more of, that one is more of milk. And the Matthew eleven twenty four is more of meat. And in our Christian life, we have to go from meek to meat. It is a must. So, and if your prayers are still the same way, then you know that um, you don't have spiritual growth. Um, prayer, is a, prayer is a tool for spiritual growth. And if you see that yourself, you're still praying the same way you used to pray, then there is something about your spiritual growth. There is something about your spiritual growth. Because prayer is that tool. See, prayer is not everything, but prayer is part of everything. Prayer is not everything. But prayer is part of everything. If it's in Thanksgiving, you pray. Even if it's the, um, even if it's the armor of God to, um, to actually service all the armor of God, it is prayer you need. After the armor of God, Paul still spoke about prayer. So prayer may not be everything, but prayer is part of everything. Prayer is not the end, but prayer is part of the beginning and also the end in a way. So, but we're still talking about this two kind of prayer. The Matthew chapter 6 prayer, yeah, is the prayer God taught his disciples before the cross. Most of the things God said in Matthew chapter 6, he has already done them. Like, forgive us our trespasses. Everything he said there, he has already gone to the cross to do those things. So that Matthew chapter 6 prayer is the prayer before the cross. This, Matthew 11, this Mark eleven twenty four is the prayer you pray after the cross. Because if you still look at yourself doing the Matthew, no, it still works. It's still very powerful. But you will just shortchange yourself. Because God has not, the, the disciples in Matthew chapter 6, the disciples of Jesus Christ saw that anytime he prays, there is always speeding answer. There is this answer constantly towards this prayer. So they went and they asked God, how did you pray? And he taught them this template. But the second template, this one is when you've, um, 
you've increased your work with God. You've increased in your faith. You want to stop drinking milk and you want to start eating meat. So you want to grow from being a baby and you want to grow to become a man that knows his identity. This is um, the Mark 11, 24 is for you. Yeah? So, so that one is before the cross. This one is after the cross. Because that one, he has already done everything on the cross already. He has forgiven our sin. Um, if you give us our deliberate, the Bible already said that uh, if the same spirit which was in you, um, if it is in you, it will cook in your mother body. So you're already, you're already with Jesus Christ already. So everything Jesus has done, everything Jesus, everything Jesus did that has come to pass is already, he, like all those, they are already done. God has already provided your deliberate already. God has already, um, he has already forgiven your sins. He has already taught you all of that. But now when you now want to move forward and you want to start eating it, then you now see that Mark 11, 24 is the prayer of a, of a man that really knows his identity. Yep. So, so in Mark 11, 24, he taught them a channel. It, is, it, didn't, just, it didn't just go through, um, it, it didn't rush it. He said you first, he, um, he, he will first, you first find the word of God. You attach the word of God to your desires. Then when you are not praying, you believe that what you've prayed for, you have received them, and that is when you have them. So the first point I want you to get here is believing doesn't happen after prayer. Believing actually happens when you are praying. You, like, you don't stop, you don't start believing um, when you are done praying. You actually start believing when you are praying. Because the Bible in Mark, um, Mark 11, 24, it said, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, there is no unbelief. He said, believe that you have received. Then the last part, and you will receive them. Believe that you have received them. That's what the Bible says. When you, it is the moment, the moment you decide. Because when you say when, when is a thing of time and moment. So the moment you schedule your prayer, the moment you decide to pray, that you are already knowing your identity. You already know who you are. You already know that you are a son of God. And you decide that, ah, this joint heir of Christ wants to pray. The time you are praying, that is the time you believe that you've received your prayer requests. It is not after the prayer. Because we'll still do some things to actually shed more light on that. Because the, the Bible has already said it, and the word of God is powerful. You believe when you are praying, not after you pray. Believe that you've received them, and what you receive, you, um, prayer is just praying the word of God and receiving the word of God. That's majorly what prayer is. Prayer, yeah, like, when you see somebody, uh, when people come and they share testimony and you see that they are not too enthusiastic. It's because most of them, they've already said hallelujah to that testimony already before they come and share the testimony. Because they've already believed that they've received the thing. And when the thing now came and really manifested, it, was, it, was not like, it wasn't something they were expecting because they've expected it a long, a long time ago. They've expected it a long time ago. And that's how we operate in this kingdom. So in this kingdom, we receive when we believe. And we believe when we are praying. It's not after we're done praying. It's not after we're done praying. We believe when we are praying. We believe that we receive the things we pray for when we are praying. When we're praying. And God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. So one reason we pray as sons and daughters um, is that we believe that we receive the things we pray for. So the moment you start praying is the moment you start believing. And the moment you start believing is the moment you start receiving. So they all go together. Yeah. So that's why this is a, that's why this template is a, you do it yourself templates. So God wants to see your desire. God wants to see your passion. God wants to see how effective you are when you are actually doing this prayer. God wants to see, God wants to see that desire. Because um, it is possible that everybody's prayer, but God is, um, and men will look at you that, oh, this man is really playing. This man is really praying. But God will look at him like, oh, this one is just doing, this one is doing presentation. Um, back then when we were growing in Christ, we used to call some, we used to call some things ministration, and we used to call some things presentation. Like, so one person that is actually, uh, God will say, no, this one is doing presentation. Then God will just say the person being quiet, and ah, no, this one is actually ministry. So there's a difference between ministration and presentation. So you can be using all your energy and everything, and all you're doing is just presentation. Yes, you are just, the only thing that is missing is a laptop and a slide deck to just be, uh, God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. So why is this? Is one, because we are sons and daughters of God. Number two is because we are joint heir with Christ. And number three is because we believe that he exists. Yeah? Number one is because we are sons and daughters. Number two is because we are joint heir with Christ. And number three is because we believe that he exists. So um, the Bible says that um, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become new. So 
When you pray in Mark eleven twenty four prayer, you don't pray like you, you don't pray like your former self. You pray like your new self. That's why the Bible says, "Come boldly." So when you know yourself, that's when you can use boldness. It is only the people that know themselves that are bold about themselves. But if you don't know yourself, then you will just be you will be praying amiss, and we will not pray amiss in Jesus' name. We will not pray amiss in Jesus' name because no, that is not that's we are not really talking about prayer, but we're talking about the identity of a person who should pray. We're not really talking about prayer. We're talking about the identity of the person. Because um, in the book of Genesis, um, when, um, when the enemy came to Eve, it wasn't, a, it wasn't any other problem. It was an identity problem. It was an identity problem. The enemy was telling her who she wasn't. That was why she, she could easily fall for that temptation. Yeah. The, the enemy was telling her who she was. So the enemy was telling her what she wasn't. That was when all that problem started. Yeah? And when the enemy tells you who you are not and you start believing, he has caught you. Yeah, so he has caught you. So when you pray in the new identity, pray like you died on the cross with Jesus Christ. That is your new identity. Your new identity is somebody who died on the cross with Jesus Christ. Yeah, because he has done all this for us. He has done everything. So, and if you keep forgetting that he has actually done all these things, go to Matthew chapter 6 and look at that template and look at what God has really done for you. He has forgiven your sins. He has provided for you. So now you're in a new self. You have to be in that person. And when that person prays, God answers. God answers. God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. So, before you pray, yeah. so this is the prayer after the cross. We've already established that there is a template of prayer before the cross because the disciples of Jesus Christ saw how Jesus was praying and how his prayers were getting answered. Then after the cross, yeah, Jesus, has, Jesus was not going to be with them physically, but the Holy Spirit was going to be with them. So this kind of prayer comes from a, a belief perspective. So you first desire. How do you desire? You look for the word of God. That you, look for, um, you look for the will of God. You look for the will of God. That is that you can attach to your desires. So you don't. You, so you stop looking at what you want. Then you start looking at um, what you want because the Bible says that um, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of uh, our faith. So you start looking at Him. You start looking at Him for for those desires. So imagine you're praying for you're praying for a, a sick person. So you stop looking at the sick person. Then you now start looking at the will of God about the sick person. You start looking at the will of God about the sick person. And what did the will of God say? By His stripes. Um, I was healed. So you start praying from that perspective because this is the this is the perspective of a new identity. You start praying from that perspective. You start praying the will of God. You start praying scripture based prayer. You start praying. You start praying for the most holy faith. That's praying in tongues because this is the this is the prayer of a this is the prayer of a, of the new creature. This is the prayer after the cross. This is the prayer after the cross. So so when you now start praying, that is the time you now start believing. Believing starts when you start praying. Yeah, I will, I will tell you why believing starts when you start praying. I'll tell you. I will. I'll tell you because you believe that you've received them when you're praying, like that. Even when you're done praying, the word of God is already in your heart, stamped already. So you know. You so you know the next actions to do to make you have those things you're praying for. So you believe that you have them. So then, that you believe that you have them. You believe that you have them. Then later. You will not have those things that you're praying for. That is the template Jesus Christ taught his disciples when he was going to leave them. So, to expand this template, one of our brothers in the Lord, um, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 8. You will now see why I say you believe during when you're praying. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Philippians. So, it is an, ex- it is an extended template of um, the, the Mark eleven twenty four prayer. It said, uh, it said, be anxious for nothing. Another version says, be bold. Be anxious for nothing. You are a new person. So, be, so anxiety should not be part of you anymore. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Yeah? If you look at the Matthew chapter 6 prayer, the first thing God did is, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. With thanksgiving, supplication and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known. So this one is a bit, um, it is a bit tricky. Because 
When you, you listen to, when you read something like, let your request be made known. But God knows everything. Yes, God knows everything. But still, don't assume he knows about your request. Assumption, as, assumption is a thing of emotions. Yeah? In TPT, he says that tell him every details. This is an expanded, this is the expanded template. So now that you are a new creation, when you want to pray as that new person, you make your request known because you are no more, you don't have the identity anymore. You are now bold. You are now a bold person. You now know yourself. So, um, please, um, KJV, 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 please. Um, it said, be, um, and, and verse 7, it said, and the peace of God, this is what happens after prayer. Like, when you pray, when you're done praying, the first thing that happens is peace. As the new identity, the first thing that happens is peace. And this is why you start believing that you've received them. So, if you don't believe during prayer, you can't have that peace. You can't have that peace you are looking for. So if you want that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, you have to believe your prayers. You have to believe during prayers. And it will guide your hearts and your mind through Jesus Christ. Verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8, the last verse. It said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are noble, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good reward, if there is any virtue, uh, if there is any virtue, Meditate on these things. Yeah? Because after you pray, that's when, um, it is after Jesus fasted and prayed, that's when the enemy came and started disobeying him. Yeah? So that's why you have to come out of prayer with the things you already received. Because the devil will, the devil might mislead you about the things you're praying for. So even if you want to think about anything, and you see that these things are not pure, they are not in the template of um, Philippians 4 verse 8, saying that um, there were several things that are pure, or several things that are honest, or several things that are of good reports. So, when you see that those things that you are already meditating on are not what you received when you were praying, then you now have to change your thoughts. Because, um, because the mind is actually the battleground. Yeah? The mind is actually the battleground. That is where God sees. It is our mind that it is our heart that God sees. It is men that judge by appearance. It is men that will judge you by appearance. How, how good you look when you want to go to interview. If they judge you by your appearance, that's why they say you should, you should look a certain way. But God looks at our hearts. So when God sees the desire of our hearts when we are praying, that is when we will not receive the things he, he, like, like he, has, he has made in store for us. He has, made, he has made in store for us. And this is the true identity of a believer. This is our, this is our, this is our true identity. When we pray. This is our true identity when we pray. This is true identity when we pray. Yeah? And the prayer I'm praying for each and every one of us is that God will, that the enemy will not flaunt with us from our identity in Jesus' name. The enemy will not flaunt with us from our identity in Jesus' name. So, like, there's something here. Yeah, um, when I first came, first thing I noticed is that um, during summer, all the leaves will, all the leaves will, will grow back. They will be green. The rain fall, they will fall down. The winter will hit them. So the truth is, leaves fall, but the roots will still remain firm. Leaves fall, but the roots will still remain firm. So how is your identity in Christ? Is it like leaves or like the roots? Are you deeply rooted? Is your identity deeply rooted in Christ? That if any season comes, a season will just come and just blow you away if you if you are still a leaf. But when you are, when your identity is deeply rooted in Christ, like no matter the storm, no matter. No matter the season, no matter if it's winter, if it's summer, no, you, you are still standing firm. You are still standing firm, producing fruit. And that's why, we're, that's why um, like, uh, uh, on and often, I check the, the vision of the year and say, okay, um, when, when, things, when, things just, when things just get overwhelming, I go to the Bible and I check the vision of the year. When I see that, what the enemy is trying to say is different from what I've heard already. No, 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 you're a liar because I already know my identity. You, you, have to, you, you just have to know. Yeah, because it is times like this where, where visions die out because um, where visions just die out because people want things very fast. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a football, I, I'm sorry for using this analogy. Yeah, the, um, there are two footballers, there's this guy Mbappe and there's this guy Jamie Vardy. They are both strikers. One was a late bloomer and one was an early bloomer. People want their miracle to be more of an early bloomer. Yeah, but people do, like, and Jamie Vardy too has a good story. Jamie Vardy too, like, he is one of the he is one of the most prolific strikers in Premier League. He still has a story. Like, um, when he won the league with Leicester City, that was the first time they ever won the league. But many people tend to want to be more of an Mbappe. But there's still Jamie Vardy. Yeah, there's still you can still be a Jamie Vardy. Honestly, it is God that writes stories. 
It's not man. It is God. Like, and when everything starts happening, you will now be like, uh, 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 how did you, it will just be like, Jacob, how did you get it so quickly? And you'll be like, no, the Lord brought it on my path. And when it happens, it will be so fast. But it is you that is, it is you that is actually putting a, putting like a time frame, putting like some, putting like something, and which God will help us for in the name of Jesus. God will help us in the name of Jesus. God will help us in the name of Jesus. So now that we know our identity, yeah. So how, how like, how do you now pray moving forward? How do you now pray? So number one, the first thing you do is schedule your prayers. You know that when you schedule your prayers, the time you schedule your prayers for is the time you receive from God. You are, you are now receiving. You are not just going to pray. Like, that's why they say prayer is a two-way communication. You talk to God and God talks to you. Yeah? You talk to God and God talks to you. So you don't, like, um, the Matthew chapter 6, the prayer, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. But the Mark 11, you want to come with, um, you want to come with something stronger. You want to come with a why. Because when, um, all the companies that have a why, like, even when recession or any other thing comes, they still stand firm. They still stand firm. So Mark 11, the prayer there will make you come back with a why. Will make you come back with a why. And until you see the manifestation of your expectation, that why will hold you firm. That word of God will, will hold you firm till, and will help you cater all the storms of life. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's stand up and pray. Um, let's stand up. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Now, okay, uh, we know what to pray. So any desire in your heart right now, pray the same way. Attach your desire. Make all requests known to God. Pray your, like, pray your prayer requests now with this new identity, with this new mindset. Pray all your requests. And everything that you want, list them. Tell God every details, all your requests. Make them known to God. Don't assume they are known. Make all these requests. Make all these requests known to God. In the name of Jesus. If you want to speak in tongues, go ahead and speak in tongues. Make your requests known unto God. Make your requests, make them known in the name of Jesus. Like and and believe when you are praying. You don't believe after you prayed. Because when you believe when you've prayed, when you come out of your prayer room, and even when um even when storms want to come, even when dangers want to come, you already believed what you did. You already believe what you did. And you didn't do it as any other person. You did it as a new creature. You did it as somebody who has been transformed with Christ. So begin to pray. Begin to make your request known to God. Make your request known to God. Make your request known to God. In the name of Jesus. Make your request known to God. In the name of Jesus. Uh -uh. It's protection you want. It is provision. Make your request known to God. Don't assume that God. Yes, God knows everything. But still, pray with the desire of your heart. Pray it. Attach the will of God to it. In the name of Jesus. And God will, and God will answer all your prayers in the name of Jesus. God will answer all your prayers in the name of Jesus. God will answer all your prayers in the name of Jesus. Now, pray to God that, that no matter the situation, no matter the condition, that you will stand firm, rooted in him in the name of Jesus. Pray this prayer that you will stand firm and be deeply rooted in Christ in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray to God that no matter the situation, no matter the condition, no matter what, um, no matter what the doctor's report might say, that your identity will remain rooted in Christ in the name of Jesus because there are there is the there is the truth and there's the fact but you want your identity to be to be rooted in the truth of God begin to pray that no matter the condition no matter the situation that from today your identity will be deeply rooted in Christ in the name of Jesus no matter the condition no matter the situation that from today your identity will be deeply rooted in Christ for in Jesus mighty name we've prayed so heavenly father I will pray that now that we know these things, expand them in our heart in the name of Jesus. Expand them in our heart in the name of Jesus. Let this word transform you in the name of Jesus. Let this word bear fruit in the name of Jesus. Let the fruit of this word, let us see them in the name of Jesus. Let the fruit of this word, let men see them and believe you in the name of Jesus. Just like your word in John 2 verse 11, it says that, um, that the miracles of, that Jesus Christ did in Galilee made his disciples to believe in him. The miracle you will do through us, let it bring men towards you in the name of Jesus. Let it bring people, let it bring multitude towards you in the name of Jesus. And we say, Father, take all the glory. We say, Father, take all the honor. We say, Father, take all the adoration in the name of Jesus. Let the meditation of our heart and the word of our mouth, let it be acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Put your hands together for Jesus and you may have your seats. You may have your seats. Thank you so much. Pastor, thank you for the wonderful opportunity for 
um, the platform. And um, you know, the, the announcement goes to us. So every Wednesday like this is, um, is a midweek service. We do midweek service every Wednesday. And every Sunday, the service starts with Sunday school by 10.30. And the main service starts at 11. So there is something we do in this church every morning from every morning, which is called morning blessing from 6 a.m. Easter time. Morning blessing is the time we spend in the morning to talk to God. And it is led by our Father in the Lord, Pastor Chris Odukbemi. So the platforms that at which you can use to reach others, um, the morning blessing is you can use, reach it through Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And the, ha and, um, and the handle is at gracelifechapel.com. Grace Life Toronto, sorry. GraceLifeToronto.com. Sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. Grace Life Toronto. So, um, the, uh, our offering will be given, our offering, so the way we give in this place is through Interact and online. Then the offering is um, at finance at GraceLifeChapel.com. No, sorry, at GraceLifeChapel.ca. And online is GraceLifeChapel.ca slash give. Thank you. I said that one correctly. So, um, please, can you help me with the next announcement? Because, um, is there any other one? All right. So, that is all for now. So, we will see you on Sunday. We will see you on Wednesday. Um, let's stand up and share the grace in fellowship. Okay. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely. God, goodness, and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. See you on Sunday. Thank you very much. You can join any of our teams, like the choir, social media, ushering, technical, kids' church, and many others. Come, be part of something extraordinary. Let your journey with Grace Life Chapel begin today. Welcome to Grace Life Chapel.